Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am delighted to welcome you to the new First Church of God in Christ Women's Day service. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run to it and find safety. Let me incite you to prepare for powerful praise and worship, inspiring testimonials, and a powerful word from the Lord that you will never forget. Make ready. Don't forget to like, share, and follow so you will never miss another New First Church of God in Christ worship experience. Stay tuned. Good morning. Father, Father, we come before you this morning praising your holy name, thanking you for waking us up this morning, thanking you for starting us on today. Father, we come today in celebration of the women here at church. We thank you for our women. We thank you for our mothers, our sisters, our aunts, our nieces, for our daughters. Father, we just thank you for all the women. And Lord, we're not leaving out the men because they support us, they stand with us. Father God in heaven, we are living in perilous times right now. Everywhere we look, every time we turn on the news, every time we turn on the radio, it's never good news. Lord, and we know that if we want good news, that we have to turn to you. Father, help us to remember who we belong to and whose we are, that we are anchored in you, that we're fast known, tightened down, held on to by you, that we are in the palm of your hand, Father, that when we go to the edge and we think we're falling, Lord, you just, you're still there. You're still there supporting us. Father, help us to encourage each other today. Help us to hear a word that will bring us to a new understanding of where we are. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. And Lord, as we go through this program today, give strength to all of our speakers as they come before you and us sharing and giving and teaching. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you. And Lord, this is my prayer. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. I'm going to read to you this morning our Old Testament scripture coming from Psalms 31 and 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning, saints. I'm going to read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen.
nothing, nothing too hard. Yes, I have got 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 my father's children. God bless you. We're so glad that you chose to join us today in our annual women's convention. And in this convention where souls are being blessed, we encourage you to join in and get your blessing. I praise God for God. First of all, I thank God for being here, being alive. And I thank God uh, for my pastor and bishop, and Lady Shamika, and all the elders, and the missionaries, and all the women, precious women of God. And I want the women to know that you are precious. I thank God because God has brought me from a long way. And I'd just like to share a little bit of my testimony with you. Back in 2016, hallelujah, praise God. Every time I think about it, every time I talk about it, I could just feel the anointing of the Lord. And I want you to know I'm sharing this because I want someone out there to be blessed like I was blessed. In 2016, I was given a diagnosis, a devastating diagnosis by the doctor. I had like a 50-50 chance of living. And when the doctor sat there and explained to me, well, the only thing that we can do right now is chemotherapy. Because if we don't do anything, the disease will just take you over, take over and take you out. So I was standing between a 50-50 decision. I want you to hear me good. But you know what I thought about? In between the 50 and the 50, guess who was in between the 50 and 50? God was standing there in between. And he let me know that I got this. Oh, praise God. And I want you to know I went through six months of weekly double doses of chemotherapy. And the therapy to me was worse on my body than the disease. But I thank God because when the therapy started and I went through, I lost a lot of weight. I lost my hair. I lost my ability to move around. I lost everything. I was totally dependent. And I laid in the bed one day because I just thought this was it for me. And I laid there in my bed and I looked up to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm just going to ask you for two things. Number one, I want you to heal me. Because 
And I said, now, if you don't heal me, I still know that you can heal me. And number two, if you don't heal me, Lord, hallelujah, I just want to be ready and just take me in on to glory. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, not yet. And I started thinking about what that Spirit was telling me. And at that point, that's when I began to climb and fight my way back to life. Because at the point, I was actually dying. But the Spirit of the Lord came in and touched my body. I had to help people help me get up out of bed. I, could, I couldn't even turn over by myself. I had to call for somebody to come help me turn over. Help me sit up on the side of the bed. Help me to get up. And then they pushed me around in the wheelchair. And I just didn't like that experience at all. And let me put a little tack there like my uh, bishop used to say. I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for over 30 years. And the things that I went through with my patients, I, I was a good nurse. And the things that I, I started thinking about, you know, I remember when this and th this and this. And I started thinking about the things that I did for my patients. And I said, now, if I did that for my patients, I'm going to do this for me. Hallelujah. I'm pulling the tack. I'm going back now. Thank God. And I thought, I said, now, I got to get up out of this bed. I got to get up out of this wheelchair. I can't sit here. I can't just do nothing. I couldn't eat. I couldn't even smell. I couldn't even uh, tolerate the smell of food. Oh, praise God. But God slowly began to tell me what to do. In the meantime, they had ordered home health aides to come in to take care of me. And I don't know what happened to them. I guess, I guess they got lost or delayed, but they never made it. So I had to do my own. And I thank God, little by little, how he showed me how to get up out of the bed how to stand up and how to turn around and how to walk and how to get in the wheelchair and then they will push me from one point to another and then when the, you know when I got to the point the Lord said okay now you can come out, out this wheelchair I got a walker and I started using a walker and I used the walker and the Lord let me know okay let's switch over to the cane now I'm thinking about this is what I did for my patients transferred over to a cane I walked with the cane and every once in a while, I looked, I said, what did I do with the cane? Where did I leave it? I thank God. Today, I'm not using the cane like I was using it then. I only use it when I think of it. And I praise God how God came in. And let me tell you, out of all of those chemotherapy, when they did the scans and they reviewed them, and they reviewed them, that they finally told me that there was no cancer found nowhere in my body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. All the cancer was gone. But then I still had the after effect of what the chemotherapy did to me. And I said, Lord, you, I know that you can bring me through this. And I want those of you that are out there that are suffering with diseases like that, don't give up. Hallelujah. Don't give in. Hallelujah. Let the doctors give whatever diagnosis they want to give. But then when you get that diagnosis and get the treatment, go to God so God can direct you and, and, and handle, tell you which way to go. And I want you to know after I went through all of that, hallelujah, I went through all of that, I was able to go back to work after eight months off. I went back to work for a while, and then I decided, no, I'm just going to retire. And I thank God that when I retired, I was doing pretty good. And do you know this year, just before this, this, this virus started, it was back in April, March, April. It was probably in March, the end of March. I got so sick. They had changed my medication, and I thought it was the medication that made me sick. I got so sick, I started feeling the same way I felt back in 2016. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't move. And they finally decided to send me to the hospital when, when my son called and told the doctor what was going on. He, he, she told him to get me over to the hospital in Hinsdale. I went over there for them to, they took all tests from the head all the way down to my feet. They, they scanned me. They took blood. They did everything. And they kept asking me questions about why is, what's what's going on why can't you eat they did all you know they, they x-rayed everything 
and praise God. They said, we don't find anything. We can't discover what's going on. So I said, well, I can tell you why I'm not eating. I'm not eating because what had happened is, and this is something unusual, and the Lord showed me what was going on. I said, every time I chew, I feel like I'm chewing pieces of my teeth. And they looked at me like, what? I said, yeah, it's little pieces, little grinding pieces. They said, oh, no, they can't be right. I said, well, that's the way it feels. Sent me to a dentist. And guess what the dentist said? The dentist said that my gums were shrinking from the chemotherapy and the bones around my teeth had started to protrude through my gums. And on this side, as it protruded, it started crumbling. And when I was chewing food, that's what I was chewing on. That's what I felt. I thought it was the teeth particle, but it was bone particle. Oh! I'm telling you what God can do for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I never heard of this before. Hallelujah. So what the dentist did, he did his thing. And he said, this is temporary because now we're into the COVID time. But they took me in because they had to take me in. And he said, as soon as this COVID thing um, passed over, then I want you to come back in here. And we're going to look at this and do some permanent things. I praise God. I came home from the hospital. And I don't know what, what they gave me, but the, I don't do medication well. They gave me some medication. It's supposed to have been for the pain. It was supposed to have been for my headache, uh, pain, pain in my back, all of this my blood pressure. The medication still made me so sick. I was so sick, I didn't even know who I was. I looked up at my son and I asked my brother, I said, who is this person over here? He said, that's your son. And I'm thinking, my son? What was his name? Hi! I just don't know. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. And finally, he started talking to me and, and, and the memory started coming back and I looked at my brother and I wanted to know who he was and he told me who he was and then I got to the point that I thought well this time it must be it and I thought at this point I'm on my way out of here and I started getting weaker and sicker and sicker finally one day my son put me in a chair and the bishop was on the um, my current pastor and bishop was delivering a message. And Fanny turned that on and said, Mom, I want you to look, listen to this. And he brought it to my ear and I looked over and I saw it was Bishop Sanders, my pastor. And I said, oh, I can't die now. I said, this is not a good time for me to die. Because <laughs> I saw him and he was just preaching and teaching. And I said, he's by his soul. Oh, no, I can't die. And I said, Lord, help me to get up from there. And I want you to know the Lord brought me up. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to know that I don't have any crumbling in my mouth. I can chew and eat anything that I want to eat. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm up and about. I'm moving about. I got a sound mind. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know, we used to sing, I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Every day I wake up with my mind stayed on Jesus. Why? Because God is good. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't nobody keep me like Jesus. And I thank God. There are other things that I went through in this life. During this period of time, there was things that were going on in my life. But God was right there. Jesus was there. And I thank the Lord because how he brought me from a mighty long ways. We used to sing another song. Look where he brought me from. Hallelujah. He brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. And I thank the Lord. And I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know without a doubt that God is a healer. I don't care what the disease is. He is a healer. All you got to do is hold to his unchanging hand. And he will deliver you. Why I know that? Because I'm a witness. I'm a walking miracle. Hallelujah. And I thank God. I thank God. Praise the Lord. And you pray my strength in the Lord. And I'll pray for you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
salvation on this morning unto his dear son the lord jesus christ i praise him and magnify him give him all the glory and give him all the praise and i thank the lord on this morning for our our pastor the bishop and for his bishop's wife and the speaker on this morning and to whomever else honor is due i praise the lord i glorify him i magnify him i give him all honor i give him all praise And as I give this testimony on this morning of the goodness and grace and mercy and love of God, I want to say, as the Apostle Peter said toward the end of his life, Apostle Peter said, paraphrasing, I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't already know. But what I want to do is stir up your pure mind in remembrance to the fact that God is good. Because if you're saved, we already know that God is good. If we say we already know that God is merciful, if we say we already know that God is a deliverer, he's a deliverer to all those that diligently seek him. We bless him. We magnify him. We praise him. We give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. I magnify him. 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 I I glorify him. Thank you, Jesus. He's been good to me all of my life. Even when I didn't know that he was good, he was good. All of my life, when I look back over my life, I realize how good God has been to me. But I want to tell you about an incident earlier in the uh, spring of the year when God, I was reminded once again of the goodness and grace and mercy of God. And that is when I caught COVID-19. I got it when it wasn't even being talked about the way it's being talked about now. I didn't know much about it as I know about it now. Didn't even know what was wrong with me when I got sick. But I thank the Lord on today. Toward the end of March, hallelujah, toward the end of March, I fainted in my house. I was rushed to the emergency room. I don't think they even knew what was wrong with me because they diagnosed me with flu and pneumonia. And about three days later, they sent me home. I stayed at home a couple of days. And then after that couple of days, I fainted away again. And my doctor, my daughter called the paramedics. They were 
uh, works me back once again to the emergency room. When I got to the emergency room that day, I was sick as I could be. I had never seen anything like it. It was chaotic. It was chaotic. It was chaotic. If I want to tell you, people was being rolled in every which way. I tell you, I thank the Lord because he spared me and because he saved me. While I was there in the emergency room, I spent almost a week in the emergency room because they said, we have no bed for you. So they didn't have a bed, so I stayed there almost a week. But then even when I got back into my room, when they finally got a room for me, and they put me in the room, I went through something like I have never, ever experienced before. I, halluc I hallucinated. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what I was doing. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was so weak. I couldn't stand. I couldn't walk. I couldn't even talk. But on this morning, I want to explain, uh, say to you and tell you and remind you that God is good because he spared my life. He healed my body. And after a while, I began to gain a little strength. Stayed in the hospital 17 days. And when I, they discharged me, the doctor told me, we're letting you go, not because you are well, but because we need your bed and we don't have nowhere for anybody. You're better off than a lot of them. While I was in the emergency room, I would hear the cold blue being called. One day the nurse was waiting on me. She said, I got to go and leave you. When she came back, she told me that that person had died. But God, but God, but God, he spared my life. I have thought many days after since this time as to why I was one of the uh, blessed ones that my life was spared. But I know that the Lord has still a work for me to do. And I want to tell everybody to, as I close, if you don't have a church family, if you don't have a sanctified natural family, you need to get uh, connected because during the time when I could not even pray, that was came a time when I couldn't even pray for myself. But the Holy Spirit reminded me that your pastor and your brothers and sisters in Christ, that your, el your brother that's an elder, they are praying for you. They are praying for you, whether you can pray for yourself or not. And it's because of the prayers of the righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of the mercy of God. Hallelujah. And because of his mercy and because of his grace, I stand before you this morning. I don't feel as well as I probably might think I should feel, but I'm so grateful and I'm so glad because so many has gone on. Since that time, we see on the news every day the thousands and thousands of thousands that have been gone on, that have gone on when this COVID-19. But I understand that even here at our church, the Lord healed many more. Besides me, there are others that he healed and that he touched. And we give him the glory. We give him the praise. We give him the honor. Glory, hallelujah, to the God of my salvation. Glory, hallelujah, glory. To the God of my salvation, I thank you on this morning for this time to tell this testimony. As Apostle Peter said, to stir up your pure mind once again. And how good God is. He's good. He's good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Be blessed, everybody. Amen. In Jesus' name. Good morning, New First Family. This is a day that we've never seen before. Thank God for every one of you that are with us, that are viewing us, whether you're on any portal on this morning, we welcome you to a Women's Day here at New First Church. And I believe that this will be the very best experience that you have all day long. Listen, I wanna to declare to you one thing. You are the evidence of how good God has been. I'm excited about what you've heard already. I'm excited about what you're getting ready to receive and hear by our wonderful guests on this morning. Listen, I want you to know that, listen, part and parcel of what we're doing here today is uh, very much connected with you. And why do I say that? It's because your support and your giving that you've done, even through all of this pandemic, has been a blessing to our ministry. And I want it to be no different on this morning. So we invite you to partner with us. And I'm speaking not to my new First Church family, but I'm speaking to everyone that have joined us on this morning by way of Facebook or YouTube or whatever portal that you may be listening to us on. 
But to my new First Church family, I want to thank you for your ongoing and continued support to us by way of tithe and offering. So I need some people that are listening to us on this morning to continue to partner with us. And I believe on this morning, as the word of the Lord says, listen, your tithe really is your covenant connector. He says, will a man rob God? And they had nerve enough to ask, wherein have we robbed thee? He says, in tithe and offering. But prove me now herewith, with what? With your tithe and with your offering. Put God to the test on this morning and watch and see won't God come through for you every single time. And so I'm asking that, listen, if you're a part of this ministry, remain faithful in your giving. Remain faithful in your tithing. If you're not a part of this ministry and you don't have a church home, I know and trust that New First Church is wonderful ground for you to sow your seed on. And so I'm asking you on this morning to prepare your hearts to give. And there are three ways that you can give to our family. Listen, you can give by way of Givelify. Download the Givelify app or go to your Givelify app. Or you can give by Cash App. Givelify is New First Church Kojic. Cash App is simply dollar sign, N-E-W, F-I-R-S-T-C-O-G-I-C. Or you can give by mail. Simply New First Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 302, Matson, Illinois, 60443. You know, uh, I'll say this, that your giving really does determine your living, and your living determines your life. I believe, listen, if you sow seed on good ground, there's a guaranteed harvest. If I eat my seed, I eat my harvest. But since I plant my seed in the fertile ground of ministry, not only is God responsive to my seed, but now he's responsible for my harvest. So I'm asking on this morning that as you partner with us, look for God to do something great in and through as well as for your life as a result of your giving. God bless you as you support us. We're praying that God continues to bless you. Blessings.
about you, but I'm ready for the word of God to manifest in my life. We present to you this morning, evangelist Lisa T. Ballard. She's a proud member of the Sunrise Full Gospel Baptist Church in Chicago, where her husband of 41 years, Pastor David Ballard Sr., serves as the senior pastor. They both heeded the call of God upon their lives, which brought them together in love and in ministry and for each other. Through passionate oratory, biblical teaching, and unwavering faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
This dynamic duo has turned the Sunrise Church into a pillar of Chicago's Inglewood community. She's a mentor, a motivator, an inspiration to many, and the co-founder and leader of the Sister to Sister Ministry. She has heeded the call of the command to go out into the world and preach the good news. Her preaching style is like no other. It is filled with humor, transparency, and humility, captivating audiences across barriers of denomination, race, and age. She has carried this ministry from church to church, prisons, schools, and conferences throughout this world. Her greatest achievement, she considers, is raising a multi-talented family that ministers in and out of the pulpit. Lisa is the proud mother of one son, three daughters, bonus mother of two, and the grandmother of 10. If anyone could ever write her life story, she would tell them that Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Receive evangelist Lisa T. Ballard. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give the Lord a real praise. Come on, praise him because he's been good to you. Praise him because he's been better to you than you could be to yourself. And all the things you've been through, glory, hallelujah, you are still here. Come on, give the Lord a real praise. Come on, let me hear you say hallelujah. Let me hear you say hallelujah. The Lord is in his holy temple and let us be glad in it. I messed that up. Let us be silent in it in Jesus' name. I am so excited to be at the the new first Church of God in Christ. Come on and celebrate our bishop, our pastor, my brother. Come on, make some noise for Bishop Terry Sanders. Let him hear you. Let him hear you. Let him hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. And to the minister that ministers to the minister, often imitated but never duplicated. I need you all to celebrate my friend and my sister. Come on, Lady Sanders. Let her hear you. Let her hear you. God bless you, beautiful woman. God bless you, beautiful woman. I love you. And all of First Church, I'm imagining you sitting there, and I'm imagining you sitting there, but this is the Lord's doing. I don't care what nobody say. This is still the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. I celebrate my pastor and my covering. He's been my boyfriend for 43 years. He's been my husband for 41 years, and my pastor for 34 years. Make some noise for the senior pastor of the Sunrise Full Gospel Baptist Church, Pastor David Balasinha. Thank you, preacher. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I got something to tell you, women. I'm glad to be a woman. If you glad to be a woman, send me some hearts up. I'm glad to be a woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good thing to be here to celebrate the women, all the preachers and the elders and the evangelists and the deacons and the people that's running the camera. To Lottie Dottie and everybody, we give you honor. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Listen, listen, I don't want to be here before you long, but I I got something to tell you. Hallelujah. Jesus is in the room today. Come on. Whatever room you're in, Jesus is right there. You got to believe that he's right there. He's concerned about you. He cares about you, and he's going to make this thing all right. God, we love you. God, we adore you. How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name upon this earth? We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to gather here today. We ask you, God, in Jesus' name, that you will be my preacher and my teacher. We ask you, God, to send your word through me. Pour your spirit out upon me so that I can speak the words that you want to hear. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father God, for Bishop Sanders. We thank you for Lady Sanders. We thank you for this house. Oh, Lord, we pray that in this house there shall be nothing missing and nothing broken but complete wholeness in Jesus' name. Come on and tell the Lord, hallelujah. Come on, come on, give him a real praise. Come on, give him a kitchen praise. Come on, give him a living room praise. Come on, give him a family room praise. Come on, give him a praise like you love them. Give them a praise like you need them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I want to tell you something, and I don't want you all to hang up on me, and I don't want you to switch channels, and I definitely don't want you to keep strolling. Stay right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are experiencing a never before moment. Look at your neighbor, say never before. Ne ne a never before moment. We can't come to church like we want to. Never before we can't we can't have we can't have church we can't have prayer meeting we we can't have YPWW we can't have we can't have we can't have Bible band we just jacked up we are in a never before moment we we can't even have home goings like nobody can do it like we can come on somebody we can't we can't get in the prayer line we can't go throw money at the preacher when the preaching is right. We can't dress up. We just in a never uh -huh, before moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got a racist bigot with the title of the president, but the character of a clown sitting in the White House. Never before. Yeah, yeah. We 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 we, we are looking at an we're looking at a, a disease or a virus that has affected every industry in the world. Somebody shout never before. We are in a never before moment. It doesn't care what color your skin is or, or where you were born or, or how much money you got in your financial portfolio. I came to let you know that you have been affected by this thing called COVID-19. It's a never before moment. How let somebody shout never before. But I gotta tell you, I got to tell you, people of God, I got a revelation from the Lord. Yeah, we really are in an open book test. Go, Lisa Ballard. I'm going if y'all go with me. We are really in an open book test. You know what an open book test is. That's the test where you can take, come on, college students, help me out. You can take uh, all the materials in the classroom with you. Come on, come on. You can have your books open. It's up to you to know how to find that information. Come on, and then be able to apply it to the answer. We... The church is in an open book test. I, 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 will subject, I will tell you that I think we are in an open book test. What are you talking about, Lisa Beller? Our faith and our trust in God in this season is being tested. Oh, I need you to take your fake face off and put on the real face and understand that this season has not been easy for you. I don't care what your title is. I don't care how many times you can jerk and how many tongues you can speak in. This is a season that has tried men's souls. Somebody ought to help me and shout hallelujah. We're in a season, people of God. Come here, listen not to me. We're in a season where our walk got to match our talk. Yeah, because the world is watching us. Yeah, y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't, ain't ready for me. This, we're in an open book test because, can I tell you why I think uh, we're in an open book test? It's because I was trying to allude to it earlier, but I'm going to just slow down and say it so you won't miss it. Yeah, yeah. If you would just be real with me and if you would really be honest with me, you have asked, and asked God, what is it that you're doing? Come on, somebody. Dear Lord, I don't understand what's really going on in this, in this season right now, and, but I just want to, if, if this is your will, Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Come on and walk me through it. God, what is it that you're doing? If you just be real with me, you can say, just like I said, when is this thing going to be over? But, but I came to let you know that I came to let you know that the only way that we're going to get through this season, help me somebody, the only way that we're going to pass this open book test is so important that you got your anchor. There it is. Your anchor is in the right place. Lisa Bella, what is an anchor? An anchor is that heavy piece of metal that, that holds a big old ship. Watch this. And it keeps the ship from slipping away. Somebody caught that. I said, and it keeps the ship, yeah, 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 from slipping away. Y'all, let me do it again because it sounds good to me. The anchor, yeah, yeah, yeah. It keeps the ship 
from slipping away. So I came to let first church know you better hold on tight. You better hold on right. And you better not lose sight. But let your anchor be in the place that it needs to be. Somebody shout hallelujah. So this morning I came by to preach to 10,000 of you all that are here looking at me right now. Go ahead and send me some hearts so I know you're there. Uh, this morning, I like to talk about, don't miss this, I think this is good, because me and Tip got excited when I was getting ready for my lesson. Who is Tip? Tip is my dog. Look here, I want to talk to you this morning about the rock and the rooster. Yeah, yeah, just go ahead, put that in the comment section, the rock and the rooster. And, and, and what are you, where are you going to get that from, Lisa Bella? Thank you for asking me. St. Saint, Saint Matthew's chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. St. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13, 13 through 20. And the Bible says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, yeah, 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 he said, the Bible right here he says, and he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And, and, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus said unto them, but whom do you, yeah, yeah, say that I am? And, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And verse 17 says, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Yeah, he says, because flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto, and then if you skip on down, the Bible says, and he said unto Peter, he said, Peter, upon this rock, Will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, just for, so I can tie this lesson up, I need you to skip over to St. Mark chapter 16. You got it? Same, excuse me, St. Mark chapter 14. I'm all, stay where you need to stay in Jesus' name. St. Mark chapter 14, and the 30th verse says, Truly I tell you, Jesus said, that tonight before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me. Somebody say the rock and the rooster. Yeah, so, so just like us, Jesus is with his disciples and they are, in, are, are experiencing a never before moment. Jesus had never asked them, who do men say that I am? And, and, and some of them said, well, some people call you Elijah. And, and some people call you Jonah. And, and some people call you Jeremiah. And Jesus was like, that sounds good, what the other people say about me. But I want to know what my posse's got to say. Those people that are close to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I wouldn't have no problem with folks talking about me that live across the street. But I'm, I got a huge problem problem yeah yeah for those that are right here next to me that's tell me they my friend but really they got a knife going in my back I wish I had some help here. who do you say that I am who who do you believe I am and and the Bible says Peter I love Peter yeah Peter cuss but I love him come here Peter said, Peter said, Jesus, this is who you really are. Y'all going to help me here? He said, he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then and thou art the Messiah. Thou art the one that, that's going to save us from our sins. And Jesus said, Peter, boy, Peter, 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 Peter. He says, because of what you say. Because of the proclamation that you made of faith, men behind you thousands and thousands of years later will be able to know what you said. Because of what you said, Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Yeah, Peter, you said the right thing at the right time. Peter, you are the one that really made it look better. Came to let you know that we are still <laughs> in an open book test. But if you skip over to St. Mark 
chapter 14, I decided to use Mark's version, just so y'all know, I've been in my Bible. Uh -huh. He said, when Jesus, Jesus has a, yet another never before moment with his disciples, because now he's sitting at the table and he's getting ready to do what he came here to do, to be my ransom redeemer, to be your savior, to be the deliverer that came to take the sins away from the world. He sat at the table with his disciples and he started getting them ready for what they had to face. Y'all know the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says that he told Peter and them, he said, look here, uh, I'm getting ready to go. Yeah, but, but, uh, but some of you all, the, I love it. He said, some of you all will fall away. Yeah, I just got a tweet from heaven. I came to let you know, those of you all that are watching and that are tuned in, don't you fall away. The enemy wants to come and snatch us away in this season just because you can't get in the prayer line just because just you can't put on your thousand dollar suits and come to church don't fall away, your anchor is in the real deal, your anchor is in your faith, this is an open book test, then he said and he said, and after this, y'all gonna be scattered because your shepherd is gonna be on the line and here comes Peter Peter says, they may fall away but Jesus, uh -huh, but I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can hear the old church mothers rocking right now saying, I shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. I shall not be moved. And, and, and during this time, the spirit of depression, I wish y'all would let me be real with your Holy Ghost sanctified field cells. I, I need for you to understand that the enemy cares, does not care about your title when he wants to sneak up this spirit on you. The enemy doesn't care how long you tear it on the altar. I want you to make sure that your anchor holds because the spirit of the enemy wants to bring depression. He wants to bring doubt. But I came to serve notice that the devil is a liar. Holler at me and shout he's a liar. I was there. But oh Peter, remember Peter? Remember I told y'all about Peter? Peter was the one that had declared that upon this rock, remember? That was that same Peter. Peter told Jesus, said Jesus, he, he said, I'll never leave you. All of them can leave you, but I will never leave you. But I love Jesus. Anybody in this room love Jesus? Let me tell you why I am in relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus can tell me my sins and he can point out my faults and he still loves me where I am. See, some of y'all ain't like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of y'all say I'm through with you because I messed up one time. But Jesus ain't like that. He'll hold me in the cradle of his arms and he'll make me feel better when, I, when I'm misunderstood. Somebody shout, Jesus! The Bible says, the Bible says, Bishop, the Bible says that Jesus told Peter, he said, dude, can I do it like I feel it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, dude, let me tell you something. You talking to all this junk right now. That's how he said it. I believe he said it that way. Yeah, yeah. When they did the translations, they cleaned it up. Yeah, he said, dude, he said, be tonight, before the rooster, the rooster, uh -huh, the rooster cocks two times, you will be, you would have denied me three times. So, so, so Peter was like, no, when he, Jesus said, dude, okay, watch what I tell you. Come here, somebody. Now, did I tell you that I wanted to talk about the rock and the rooster? Did I, did I, did I bring that up? But the Bible says that as they led Jesus away, and in the 60, and if you keep on reading down in the 66, 66 verse, they came and they arrested him. And the Bible says that the disciples was hanging out. Y'all know the story. Y'all know what they were doing. They were hanging out, but Peter, uh-huh, it must have been chilly outside. Anybody, y'all flowing with me? And, and the Bible says that Peter was warming his hands in the fire with the other folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the damsel, oh, there she is. I know y'all thought that I missed the women. There is the woman factor. Yeah, a damsel said, I thought I saw you with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Peter's like, no, I wasn't with him. And he went on down and somebody else said, Peter, I... I think I seen you with him up the other day. And Peter said, I told you I wasn't with him. And the, and, and the Bible says that somebody else said, Peter, oh, Peter, I think that I saw you with Jesus the other day. And before you know it, Peter said, I didn't know him. I didn't want with him. I didn't hang out with him. And then he went to cussing. I don't know how he cussed and I don't know what words he cussed, but the Bible said yeah. that he went to cussing. Now, Lisa Bell. 
Can you tie up the rock and the rooster? I'd be happy to. Thank you for asking me. The damsel was the conduit to show Peter who he really was. That was good. I know that was good. That made me happy. The damsel was the one that needed to point to Peter how he needed to come up to the mark. Yeah, perhaps. I don't know, first lady, but perhaps COVID-19 is the kind of do it to tell the body of Christ that we need to return to the old way, where there is the old path, where there is a good way. The Bible says that the damsel told Peter he, she was the one. Wait a minute. Wait, hold it, hold it. What was the damsel's name? I don't know. <laughs> where was the damsel from? I don't know. What was this woman's uh, uh, nationality? I don't know because none of those things was important. Yeah, her purpose was more important. I came to let you all know that's holding on to your titles. I wish I had some help and don't understand your purpose. I need to tell you if you don't have any power behind the title, it's just a nickname. Come on, somebody. I, I may not be important, but I am necessary. That girl wasn't important, but she was necessary. And the Bible says that old Peter, uh-huh, I, I couldn't hardly wait to get to this lesson. <laughs> the rock, uh, the rock represented the anchor, yeah, and, 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 and the abilities to get things done. But the rooster represented my inabilities. The rooster represented my undisciplined self. The rooster represented my fickle self. I'm, but the rock represented how strong I can be. So this morning, New First Church, I just came by to let you know, will you hang out with the rock or will you hang out with the rooster? I came to let you know that we are in an open book test and you can't afford to be no rooster. You got to be the rock. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. The rock says uh, that my calling and my election is sure. The rooster says uh, I don't know who I belong to. The rock says uh, that I will trust in the Lord. The rooster says uh, show me how we gonna get through this thing. But good morning New First Church. Uh, God sent me your way to tell you to do it like my grandmother used to do. She used to be Mother Sally Jefferson. We would go to the old path church of God in Christ on the third Sunday every single month and Mumbo would get up there and sing in times like these we need a savior and in times like these we need an anchor and you be sure you be very very sure that your anchor holds and it grips the solid rock I just came to let you know that in times like these we need to be sure that our anchor is holding. Is there anybody here that's holding on to the solid rock? Years and years ago, there used to be an insurance company. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait a minute, I forgot to tell you that in the verse of the song, it would say that rock is Jesus. He is the only one, but he still is the rock. Y'all better help me say that Jesus is the rock. I remember years ago, there was an insurance company that had a slogan and said, get a piece of the rock. Is there anybody here that understand what I'm saying? I need you to get a piece of the rock. Hold on to the rock. Jesus is the one that will keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory. So holler at me and shout rock steady. My anchor will hold if I just rock steady. Oh Christ the solid rock. I stand rock steady. All of the ground. All of the ground is sick and sand. Rock steady. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. I don't care what the world is doing. Rock steady. Cause he promised never to leave us. Rock steady. He won't leave you alone. He kept my grandmother. He kept my mama. He's keeping me. Rock steady. When the waves of affliction sweep over your soul, hold on to the rock. Know that he's able. Know that he's.
Jesus me that Jesus told told old Peter said Peter because of what you said I'm going to proclaim that you are the rock and of this church and the gates won't prevail the gates of hell won't prevail against the rock it amazes me that he used the rock somebody ought to help me that he used the rock you know lady about rocks they are durable they are strong it takes a whole lot to tear down a rock herein is the lesson and I'm going back home now God made you to work God made you God built you so you won't break he built you so you won't break he built you so you won't break even if your money is funny you won't break your chain is strength you won't break kids acting funny you won't break can't get back to church you won't break holler at your girl and shout rocks that out hallelujah 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 you be sure you be very sure that your anchor holds if I never get to a district meeting. You be sure that your anchor holds if I never make it to a convocation. You be sure that your anchor holds if I never get to the sunshine bed. You be sure that your anchor holds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
I came to tell the church to hold on. Let your anchor holds. So, so Lisa Bella, what? My anchor done got a little rusty since I've been out of church. Well, you can pray. Sometimes when the Lord wakes us up in the middle of the night, First Lady, he ain't just waking us up so we can scan through First uh, Facebook. He's waking us up so we can get on our knees. Hallelujah today. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? The, you don't have to wait on the bishop to call on the fast. You can fast. This is a season that we need to be turning our plates over anyway. Why are you telling me all that? So we can build our anchors up. Hallelujah. Then the encouraging word. The encouraging word. Let me be. Let me be uh, transparent. I've been working remotely. I've been working remotely for probably five, six months now. And today I went back on campus because I had to get some stuff. And when I left campus, I felt, I felt weird. Y'all gonna let me be real? Y'all gonna let me be, be transparent? I felt, I felt weird. Where was the kids? And why was the bookstore closed? And it, I just felt, it just didn't feel good to me. And I felt, I felt the spirit of depression trying to creep up on me. Somebody shout the devil is a liar. I, I felt it. I felt it. And, 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 and I'm saved. And I, and I got the Holy Ghost. And that's why I think the Lord wanted me to see what was happening. And I said, well, Lord, I believe you. I, I, I wish you... I wish you believe. I wish you would just go on ahead and, and believe God. I believe that in this season, that child that you've been praying for that received salvation, I believe they will be saved. I believe God. Come on, come on, come on. I don't want you to allow that spirit to rise upon you. I want you to believe God. Can the church say yeah? If you would just turn your hearts and your minds this way. And I want you to touch your head. Just put your hand over your head. And I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke the spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of doubt. And I release right now that we will have the mind of Christ. Yeah. But we'll think on those things. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things of good report. If there be any virtue. If there be any praise. We'll think on those things. Put your hand on your ear. Put your hand on your ear. Cover our ears today in Jesus' name. That we will hear the voice of the Lord. Uh, we, will re we will believe your report. Come on, come on, come on. We won't allow gossip or confusion to come up our way. But our ears are anointed to receive the word from the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Nothing can enter my ear that will bring me down. Or that will cast a shadow of doubt in Jesus' name. Come on, cover your eyes, cover your eyes. Anoint my eyes, God, that I may see, Father, what you're trying to show us in this season. What you want me to see in this season. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Let me see those things that are good. Don't let me seek after those things that are evil. But let me see the good in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hand over your mouth. Put your hand over your mouth. I will speak the law of kindness. Wisdom, like your word says, wisdom shall flow out of my mouth. I will speak those things that are honest, those things that are pure, those things that are necessary, and those things that are true. I will speak your word in Jesus' name because the power of death and life lies in my mouth in Jesus' name. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, O Lord, in thy sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. If you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, it's really, really, it's really, really easy. This is what I want. I want to trip you out. You don't even have to be in church to accept the Lord. You don't have to be in church to accept the Lord. If you would just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth 
that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. But what I need you to do is to connect with this church. Let us pray you through. Let us, let us, let us nurture you. Let us help us get your anchor strong. This is a good pastor. This is a good church. And this ain't just got to be a good church. We've been a good church for years and years and years. Don't be homeless. You're too intelligent to be homeless. Come on back to the Lord. Those of you that are listening, that have left God, come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Put your name on, our, on the comment section. Inbox us and somebody will get back to you. Because there's nothing better than knowing Jesus. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Come on, celebrate him. Celebrate him like you love him. Celebrate him like you appreciate him. Come on, if this word did anything for you, come on and celebrate him. God is good. God is good. If you really love the Lord, clap your hand. Come on. If you really love the Lord, clap your hand. Come on. If you really love the Lord, then your face is surely showing. If you really love the Lord, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present the faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the church of God in Christ say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Listen, what a powerful word that we just heard from Evangelist Lisa Ballard. I don't know about you, but listen, she spoke a word into every one of our lives. And let me say this, I just believe, to those of you that are watching, she's made a mark on your life that shall never be erased. The word of the Lord tells us in 1 Corinthians 9 and 11, it says that if I've sown to you that which is spiritual, it's only proper that you sow that which is into us, that which is carnal. Let me say this. You need to seed into the word that you heard on this morning. Why do I say that? Because planting a seed into the word and the source that you heard, it brings back a blessing into your life. You can give, hallelujah, to this ministry on today three different ways. You can give, number one, by Givelify. That's Givelify app, New First Kojic. Or you can give by Cash App, dollar sign, N-E-W-F-I-R-S-T, Kojic. Or you can even sow a seed by mail to New First Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 302, Matson, Illinois, 60443. Listen, those of you that are watching us, I want you to begin to just sow. Why is that? Because I believe and I know for a fact, my wife and I, we can testify to the fact that, listen, in the toughest times of our lives, we've sown seeds and we've watched God bring forth a bountiful harvest in our lives. The word of the Lord tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. And as we speak to you on this morning, I want you to begin to just put in the screen, I'm sowing, I'm sowing into this ministry. I'm sowing into that anointing. Lisa Ballard blessed us on today. So why not be a blessing back to ministry? He says, I love a cheerful giver. But a lot of times we stop right there. God does love a cheerful giver, but he says that he will make all grace abound toward us in every good work we will have sufficiency in everything that we do. When you sow that seed on today, you need to ask God, God, I'm sowing a seed. Now I want you, I really do mean this, Lord, I want you to place favor on what I'm getting ready to do next. Now, if you sow a seed and you don't do anything, don't expect for the favor of God to touch your life. But after you've sown that seed on today, the Bible says God will bring all sufficiency into any and everything that you do, that you may have all sufficiency and favor upon that which you endeavor. Watch God work through the seeds that you sow on today. Come on, write it on the screen. I'm sowing on today. I'm sowing into ministry. I'm sowing into this anointing because if I eat my seed, I eat my harvest. But the moment I plant my seed, you heard me say it before, the moment I plant my seed, listen, God is responsible not only for my seed, but he's also responsible for my harvest. I don't know about you, but Lady Shamika, I'm just excited about what is taking place on today in this virtual Women's Day. And listen, even though we can't be connected physically, listen, we're still connected 
by the Spirit of God. What a wonderful, wonderful service. And uh, listen, I just commend you. And uh, let me say publicly, I'm standing next to the most beautiful woman in the whole wide world. Two things that happened to me. Number one, salvation. That was the best thing. But the very next best thing happened to me was this beautiful woman right here, Lady Shamika Sanders. And she is the, um, listen, the director over our women's ministry here at New First Church. And I'm going to give it over to her because uh, she has the mic right now. Go ahead, sweetheart. Well, I follow your lead, Bishop. I'm ready to rock steady, hold tight, and I'm ready to not lose sight. Amen. And I pray that you all are too. I would like to give out some shout outs and some thanks. I want to start off, one, by thanking you for allowing the women's department to go forward. We've had some challenges, but we press forward. We've had some things that seemed like we couldn't do it, but God said, go forth, and that's exactly what we've done. And for that, I am grateful. I also want to thank our former women's department president, Evangelist Geraldine Smith. I want to thank her for her love and her support and for her entrusting in me to take over the women's department that she has led so graciously for so many years. Amen. I also want to thank, as you already have, but I have to thank again, Evangelist Lisa T. Ballard. She gave us a powerful anointed word. I am stirred up in my spirit and my soul. I am ready to rock steady. I am ready to pass this open book test. I know that I am leaning on the rock. I'm not the rooster. Praise God. I hope that you all will go back and tune in again and look and relook and get into that word that she ministered because it is soul stirring and is life changing. Let me uh, go further in my thanks. I would like to uh, thank uh, our Women's Chorale, um, which was led by our Minister of Music, Elder Keith Heron. And I would be remiss if I did not thank our wonderful production team, which was led by our very own Elder Dwayne Willingham. He did a great job. He put together a team that seems like it could not be, but from his tenacity and his ambition, we were able to pull off this production and God's hand is all over it. You'll see. Thank God. Listen, we thank God again for every one of you that have viewed uh, this wonderful service on this morning. And I just believe that, listen, what God has placed on our lives today will turn around and bring forth a bountiful harvest by way of his spirit. And so I challenge you, receive from the word, walk in that word, apply it to your life. And I promise you, if you go with God, God will go with you. Blessings. We love you with the love of the Lord. See you next time.